so you can go over the things that's in the bulletin. Let's remember all of our shut-ins that's in the bulletin are sick. And I wanted to tell that Matthew Cruz, let's remember him. Uh, he had cancer and has come back and it's very serious. Uh, so let's remember him in our prayers because he needs it right now. Also, Barney told me this morning that Justin and the twins was not feeling well today. That's the reason they wasn't with us. So let's remember them also. Into our uh, worship service tonight, our song leader be Joel Foster, our lesson by Dennis Strine, and our closing prayer by Joel Maddox. We'll begin our worship service with opening prayer. Will you please bow with me? Our kind, loving, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you for this time we can all come out and take part in this worship service. Thank you for our health and our strength that allows us to be out here to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for your son Jesus as he come to live on this earth, lived and died as a man hung upon that cruel cross. He died there and he shed his blood. <coughs> the blood is for the remission of our sins if we do thy will. We pray at this time. You'll be with all the ones of our number that are shut-ins. be with our sick. be with the ones, Matthew, especially be with him as they be having going through different treatments at this time. Also be with Justin and the twins that they may return back to their health. Be with all the ones that take care of these, the doctors, their families, and the, one, the caregivers. And uh, especially the ones that can be back with us, it will be nice to see them at the next point in time, if I will. Also, be the ones we remember that are traveling, pray that will keep them safe, to and from their destinations. Also, pray that at this time, if you'll be with our brother Joel as he leads our singing tonight, that we'll all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Be with Dennis and Vicky as they work here with us. Pray that you'll give them many years of service under them. Pray that you'll be with Dennis tonight and the lesson he has that we'll all 
and that he have great recollection and the way he teaches it to us, we all can understand it, that we'll all study it our own selves and apply it to our lives and be stronger and better Christians and teach others our word. Especially pray at this time that you'll be with all of our leaders of our nations, pray that they would look unto you for guidance and do the things that is pleasing in our sight. I also pray that you'll be with all of our military, especially ones on foreign souls. Pray that you'll keep them safe and return them back to their families safely if it be thy will. Also be with the ones that uh, take care of us here, our first responders, our policemen, our firemen, all the ones that protect us. Pray that you'll be with them and that you'll protect them also. We want to thank you for the church that we each year at Malden. We pray that each and everything we say and do here always will be according to thy will. And pray that each one of us here, that is here, this congregation will hear at the end of our time, well good, that faithful servant enter into thy joys. Also I pray that you'll be with us, that you'll always guard, guide, and direct us, that you'll forgive us all of any sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Eight, nine three two and nine three three. Nine three two and nine three three.
turn into your Bibles, Genesis chapter 38, 32, I'm sorry, chapter 32, we'll get there in just a moment. Have you ever been one of those students who does not do well on tests? While you may have a complete understanding of the subject, 
You do great on your assignments. You take really good notes. But when it comes time for the test, you don't do as well as you think you could have. Maybe it's because they stress over the test so much because they're afraid of failure. A failure at a test or anything really in life can be painful. It can also be costly. And at times very inconvenient. Like taking the driver's test over and over and over again. But failure can be one of those great teachers. We can learn a lot of lessons that we are not able to learn in other ways. And so for tonight, I'd look at, like to look at an episode of failure in one man's life. It taught him many things, but it also continues to teach us today. Let's look at Aaron. Moses' brother, if you will. And before we look at his failure, let's take a little bit of time to do a background on Aaron. According to Exodus chapter 4, verse 14, we find that he was his brother, Moses' brother. He was appointed at first to be the spokesman for Moses to the Israelites in Egypt, but also before Pharaoh. We understand and, and know very well that Moses was reluctant to speak. And so to solve that problem, God gave Aaron the task of speaking for Moses. Later on in life, Aaron and his sons were tasked by God to serve as the priest in the ministry of the tabernacle while the Jews were wandering around in the desert. He was at Moses' side for most of the time in the desert. You could say he was his right-hand man. But like Moses, Aaron was not permitted to enter into the promised land. He was told by God to pass on the priesthood to his son. And he died on Mount Hope. And he was loved very much by the people. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 20 verses 27 through 29 tells us that they wept and mourned him for 30 days. He was a great servant. He was the first to serve the people as a whole. But he was also a man who experienced great failure in his life and ministry. So we'll go ahead and we'll set the sin for Aaron's failure. The people escaped Egypt. They camped in the desert. God provided for them food and water. God spoke to the people, gave them instructions in his laws and his ways. The people had been given the instructions as a system of worship which Aaron and his sons were appointed to serve as priests. There was a lot of activity going on in the preparation of the tabernacle and all of the elements that would be used in their worship. But it was during this time that Moses was called by God up to Mount Sinai to be given the commandments for the people. These would be inscribed in stone. Moses was gone for a very long time. And it was during this time that Aaron fails in his leadership and priestly role. Now, if you will, let's look at Genesis 32, starting in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, oh, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold 
that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a grading tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation. He said, Tomorrow shall be a feast of the Lord. And they rose up early the next day, offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people whom you have brought out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way I have commanded them. And they made for themselves a golden calf, and worshipped it, and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. People become restless, get fidgety. Religion was the center of their lives and nothing was happening while Moses was gone. They wanted to have a religious feast. They wanted some sort of religious activity. And so they demanded that Aaron provide them one. Now we understand the tabernacle, all the instruments of the sacrificial system of worship, as well as the procedures have yet to be completed. These people were anxious. They wanted to celebrate. They wanted to worship. They didn't want to wait for Moses. They didn't want the rest of the story, if you will, from God. So Aaron, who was raised in Egypt and raised in Egyptian ways, trying to pacify this revolt by giving in to their demands. Remember that Aaron is the spokesman. Moses is the leader. And God speaks and instructs Moses, not Aaron. We may not have known how to hurry up the completion of the work, but Aaron knew who the leader was. And Aaron knew enough that he should have waited. So he collects all this gold, makes this calf, which in Egypt was a symbol of fertility and prosperity. As far as religion goes, this was a very creative and religious masterpiece. It wasn't really made in a way to dishonor God. But Aaron's intention was to get the people to calm down, to give them a legitimate and satisfy satisfying worship experience. Those things go wrong. They reverted back after the eating and the drinking to their old ways. They started participating in the immoral activities that were so prevalent during the Egyptian ceremonies. Then the scene switches in Exodus 32 and verses 9 through 18. Moses on the mountain. God informed him of his anger to the people because of their sins. But Moses successfully pleads with God not to destroy them. And he rushes back to camp. Now let's pick up this account starting in verse 19. And as soon as he came near the, calf, the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger burned hot. And he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf that they had made and burned it with the fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, what did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, 
Let not your anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people, that they are set on evil. For they said to me, make us, a, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And so I said to them, let any who have gold take it off. So they gave it to me. I threw it in the fire and out came this calf. Moses returns, destroys the calf, confronts his brother. Now, what I want us to look at is how this great man faced his failure. See, he doesn't even have the strength to own up to his sin. They forced him to do it. You know how they are. It's not my fault. I just threw the gold in the fire and out come the calf. You were gone. I had to do something. Because of his weakness and failure to stand up for what was right. We read further down that the, that the people had committed a great sin and they were punished for it. <coughs> Moses called those who would stand with him and the sons of Levi came to him and he told them to take their swords and to go kill the people. 3,000 men lost their lives that day because of the rebellion. They killed their brothers, the fathers, those who stood in the way of God. The people broke that covenant with God to be faithful and not worship idols. And the result was guilt and shame. We can imagine Aaron's reputation of standing before God had been seriously compromised. He was chosen to be a minister to God for the people. And he disgraced himself. But this is not where it ends. Long after this episode, the people rededicated themselves and the work was complete. The tabernacle. They had completed all of the equipment all of the priestly garments. Moses receives and passes on the new set of commandments. The people were prepared to worship God according to his command, his purpose, and his design. So we fast forward to chapter 40. We read of another important episode in Aaron's life. After all of these things that had taken place, after everything was built, the Bible says that the following instructions were given to Moses. Chapter 40, verses 12 through 16. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and you shall wash them with water, and put on Aaron the holy garments, and you shall anoint him and consecrate him, that he may serve me as priest. You shall bring his sons also, and put coats on them and anoint them as you anointed their father and they may serve me as priests and their anointing shall admit them to the perpetual priesthood throughout all generations and this Moses did according to all that the Lord commanded him so he did this miserable failure this man who demonstrated how incompetent he was able to do the very thing that he was called upon to do. The same man over whom these words were spoken of by God himself. A happy ending to a sad story of failure. You know, in the beginning I said failure was a good teacher. And we've reviewed Aaron's failure in order to highlight some of the lessons we can learn from his experience. Great people fall. 
Aaron was chosen by God. He was given power. He was given position. But this did not guarantee him a life without failure. God can use us to serve him not because we're great, but because he's great. The A-types, the overachievers, those who have succeeded in many, in many areas need to understand that they can fail and fail badly. And when they do, they need to realize that God can still use them. Because even after they have failed, because his love is greater than any of our achievements. Our failures are never forgotten. But our failures are forgiven. Aaron's failure is recorded forever. In the Bible for everyone to see. And at times I sit down and I look at these and I'm like, why would you even put something like this in there? Because God is showing us that no one is better than anyone else. That there is not a perfect person on the face of this earth. The one thing it also shows us is that even after this great failure in Aaron's life, he could continue to go on with his life and his ministry because God had forgiven his stumbling. Some think that as long as they can remember their, their own or someone else's mistakes, that there is no real forgiveness. But Aaron's story reminds us that we need to focus more on God's forgiveness instead of our failures. And that way we can regain our confidence for the future. We can maintain and get back our ability and desire to forgive others and ourselves. There's not a single inventor that ever lived that their invention that they made the first time worked exactly as they planned it to work. Edison failed in making the light bulb numerous times until he found the right metal that would hold up to the heat. Failure lays the groundwork for improvement. Aaron learned a hard lesson in this episode with the golden calf. But this lesson prepared him for the rigorous ministry of the priesthood. There was a tremendous responsibility laid on his shoulders. It also improved his capacity for understanding and compassion. Despite the splendor of the tabernacle, the divine mysteries of the sacrificial system, aside from the beauty and the commanding presence of those priestly garments, Aaron never lost sight of the fact that like the people he represented, he too was just a frail human being in need of God's mercy. Because this failure was indelibly stamped on his heart, he was able to be more effective because of it. From beginning to end, the Bible tells and retells the story of man's continual faith in keeping God's commands. 
but it also tells and retells God's continual effort at forgiving and restoring. Before God created this world and all that's in it, he knew failure was coming. He knew it was going to happen. But he already knew how he was going to take care of it. And this should give us the confidence to approach him the next time that we have failed too badly to ask for forgiveness. To ask him to be our Lord and let us be his sons and daughters or ministers again. <coughs> Failure is coming to each and every one of us sooner or later. We're never going to be successful in every endeavor that we do. Sometimes those failures aren't just going to be something that uh, I didn't get my car fixed the right time. But the failure that puts a barrier between God and us. Because of error, we can see the forgiving heart of God. No matter how grievous it was at that point, God restored Aaron to his rightly place. And he can do the same for each of us. If you are not a child of God, we want to give you the opportunity this morning. Nothing in your life is too great that God cannot forgive and forgive. God can take it away this very evening. Through your repentance and confession, being baptized for the remission of sins, God will give you a clean state, slate to start fresh and new. No sin is too great. If we are that child of God and if we have failed too many times and we think the failure is too bad for God to forgive, it is not. He will take care of it for you and restore you in that relationship with him. If any has a need, won't you come as together we stand and we sit. <laughs> Follow Jesus standing for the right, holding up his banner in the thickest fight, listening for his orders, ready to obey. Who will follow Jesus, serving him today? Who will follow Jesus? Who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus when the tempter charms? Fleeing then to safety to the Savior's arms. Trusting in his mercy, trusting in his power, seeking fresh renewals of his grace each hour. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus in his work of love, leading others to him, lifting prayers above? Courage, faithful servant, in his word we see, on our side forever will the Savior be. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus? Who will make reply? 
Please be seated. Will you bow with me, please, as we go to our Father in prayer. We ask his blessings on the bread. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful, Lord to be able to share this meal with one another and to remember the sacrifice your son made. Without that sacrifice, Lord, we would be living in a world that would be forever lost. But for his sacrifice, Lord, you have saved us from the sting of death. You have given us a hope where there was none before. So we ask your blessings on this bread, Lord, as we remember the body that was nailed to that cross was given up for us. And as we take it, Lord, may we be forever reminded that our freedom was not free and that it was fully paid. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Father in heaven, we ask your blessings on this fruit of the vine. It represents the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. The blood that washed away the sins of the world. The blood that continues to cleanse man today. Your children. When they have fallen short. It would be very hard for us to be able to remember that sacrifice if we did not take these emblems on a regular basis. And while for some it may just be just another thing to do, for your children, Lord, it has very deep meaning to us. I pray that we'll take it in a manner pleasing to thee. And always in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. basket on the table for those who may not have had the opportunity this morning to so we'll bow with me please. Our Father in heaven we are grateful for the things you have provided in our lives you have allowed us to take care of our needs but you've also allowed us to have our wants we're just grateful for the blessings and the prosperity you've given us so we pray Lord that you will accept our gifts that we return to you and we pray Lord that as we have these gifts that we use them in a way that will glorify you and your son and bring honor to this institution we're just grateful lord that we have the abilities to do these things and we ask your blessings on them. in jesus name we pray amen is there anything further by anybody before we dismiss tonight very well, at this time we'll be dismissed with prayer. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all the many blessings that you've given unto us. We're thankful for the opportunity that you've given unto us that we can come here tonight and we can sing songs of praise to some degree. We can hear a portion of our words spoken unto us. We pray that as we go out this week, months to come, years to come, we will always be uh, a person that is always looked up to. That the way he conducts himself, he or she conducts themselves, that people will know that we are always Christians. We pray that 
it would be uh, with our shut-ins, uh, low range, all experience, you would be with hearing less form, that you would be with uh, CD, that you would be with Jason, and the twins, say that you would be with Matthew, as he proves as he is having cancer. We pray that you would be with the doctors, the nurses that are attending to him, and the family members also. We pray that you would always watch over us, that you would guide us all your days in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>